the governor-elect of uh, Imo State, South East Nigeria, Chief Rochas Okorocha, would like to congratulate you on your hard-won victory. Well, for your personal feelings, how does it feel uh, emerging uh, victorious after one grueling week of uh, expectations? Well, I would say um, to God be the glory. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. It's a mixed feeling. One, yes, feeling that you came out through a long battle that was almost uh, bringing to question our democracy. And thank God, it all, all of a sudden came to an end. And uh, uh, now I'm now a governor-elect of the state. Very good feeling. Uh, you can see them. I see multitude of crowd. I see people rejoicing everywhere. And they're happy. But again, the other part of the feeling is the challenges ahead. I see, um, I see the challenge. I feel the challenge more than the victory itself. I see a lot that needs to be done. And um, so it's a mixed feeling. It's a feeling of, hey, you've won election that the whole world has all been looking up to. Again, uh, you're looking at the challenge ahead. The question now is, with these millions are out there rejoicing, expectations of what your government will look like or what you will, be, you will do, so you see, that kind of preoccupied my mind more now than the celebration of victory. Well, it's quite remarkable that uh, you're already thinking ahead, but uh, this election almost did not hold because we were made to understand that uh, you intended to go to court on the eve of the elections to have uh, the independent national electoral commissions uh, stop the elections from holding. Uh, what informed uh, that decision on your part? Well, well I know. I quite be, quite to be honest to you, I, I, there was no point in time that I felt that I, I was going to win this election because the mood of the state said so. Uh, over, I was over 90% of the Imo lines really wanted me to be their governor. I've been issue. So it wasn't a question of what the people wanted. What we had to, was, we were struggling with was the institutional thing that we have to uh, you know, uh, face in, 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 the, uh, in our victory. Uh, so I had no fear at all. So the issue of uh, rerun or election, I was quite prepared for it. Even if I had to repeat the entire election, we were quite prepared for it. Uh, but all the same, you know, this is a party, and there are so many organizations who felt in the first place what happened ought not to have happened. So on their own, went to court. It might shock you to know that I'm not even aware that people went to court on my behalf. And uh, the party did and everything. But Roger Sokrocha, as a person, never went to court because I was... 100% sure that the election, no matter how many times it's done, that I was going to be a winner. So there was no need for court in the first place. So how would you uh, narrate the performance of the Independent National Electoral uh, Commission? A lot of us questions were cast on their performance and even leading to the supplementary elections, there were some misgivings in certain quarters. So uh, what is your own view about the performance of the uh, electoral umpire? I, I think the team that came were just a credible team. But you see, because of previous experiences, people tend to have cast a lot of doubt in the person. But at the end of it all, they proved themselves worthy to be called national commissioners, and we quite commend them. Uh, the security agencies on the same part also the same. People had uh, bad feelings in, about the entire security arrangement, but again, they have proven themselves that it's not what the people thought that they are. Um, so we, we commend them, we commend especially for those of them that stood on the side of truth. I, start, I stood for the side of Nigerian democracy to protect the Nigerian nation democracy. We commend them. Uh, but all the same, uh, all that started well ends well. You see that uh, everyone has, uh, is now celebrating. The Nigerian uh, army, particularly, uh, requires, uh, requires very high commendation. Uh, the Nigerian police and all other security agencies will commend them for their forthrightness and ability to take decision. Uh, if democracy and relations are conducted this way, uh, but then we will be talking about uh, uh, the American standard of democracy. Uh, but it, we didn't have to use arms and use this number of uh, policemen and security men to ensure free and fair uh, election. That, that shouldn't be the idea then. But one significant thing is that this is my victory or this is my election, I guarantee you will be the beginning of the people's mandates. Uh, uh, this will be in fact same people that power has come back to people. From now on, in this state, the people will decide 
who governs them. And this issue of imposition of leadership on people will be a thing of the past. Well, it's quite interesting that uh, there are 27 local government councils in, in the state. We had to have uh, supplementary elections in at least four of them. Uh, well, we have results from 26 uh, local government councils in the state. Elections did not hold in Obuta local government council. Well, we talked about the issue of uh, the massive security that was mobilized, but in spite of that, there were security breaches. In some quarters, it was even alleged that uh, your own people were responsible for the prevention of elections there. But be that as it may, with uh, elections not declared for one particular local government, do you still feel your victory is complete? No, no, complete, because, um, but let me try and put things right. What happened in Uguta was, uh, was uh, really a case of people who are already suspicious of the system. Uh, we saw what had in the morning, the materials were not complete. And we said, not again. We're going to move out of this place until we see how the materials complete. And there was no reason as, there was no genuine reason as to why Enoch could have provided the complete materials. So things like stamp, ordinary stamp were not there. Uh, the battle papers were not complete as some of the materials. And a few hours later, one of the officials of the Enoch was found tampering and, and, and the DP arrested him. So that again put the whole thing out of context. But we say, no, something must be fishing. Uh, probably the same old practice that happened in the last election where results were written in private houses. Um, so they got worried. So we could have blamed the people who said, no, we must get this still right. Then we must go back to the streets or back to the uh, uh, walls and then come back to right results. So, but as it is, my victory is uh, complete. This election was complete because even the one local government which is about 70,000 votes. And, and if you look at the difference between me and the uh, outgoing governor, uh, you, you will now agree with me that uh, it still would have, if I had to do the measure on and on again, uh, our victory would be sure. And look at what happened in the In the day last time, it was like we were neck to neck. What they use as neck to neck. Uh, but we, now you can see the real election and the margin. Uh, and then you could see that it was about the same total of people that voted, that casted the same vote, and you can see the margin, which is telling the real, the real election as it should have been. So, but all the same, uh, we think um, it's good for democracy anyway. Which brings us to this issue. What were some of the peculiar challenges you had to contend with in the build up to both the main elections on April the 26th and the supplementary elections? What, uh, the, one of the major challenges we had was this. This our Nigerian tradition of power for occupancy, where, where every government apparatus is provided for a sitting government. And I don't know whether that will help democracy because in the, in the future, it will, it, will, it, will, it will not give us a very a democracy, a democracy of our dream. If there was any way to have come up with a law that makes every government before the expansion of return of office, you should enjoy, you should be a candidate. You see, when you're a candidate and you're a governor, there are two conflicting things. And the, the man don't tend to run as a candidate, he runs as a governor. And the, as a governor, you become a... He uh, all the politics of office, the police, the army, the funds, and everything. But if a candidate is a candidate, then there will be a fair election at the time. There will be no abuse of power. So I would suggest that, my suggestion would be, even as a governor coming now, that Hey, three months expiration of every governor's office, and if you want to take care of an office, step aside. Let's run a seat in your office. So you can run an election. That was what is called a level playground. You can never have a level playground for as long as the sitting governor is, is a candidate. And that's what you, you see in, the, in, 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 in uh, party primaries too, where it is impossible to win an election of primaries against the sitting governor. Uh, so I, I think these are some of the things we have to find too in our democratic process. Well, as far as your suggestion is concerned, uh, we have you on tape and rest assured that in four years' time we'll be holding you to your word. Tomorrow, hold me to my word. Okay. See, power is not... There's something about this, and that's, that's exactly what I want to really put right here. See, power is not about the, about the holder of the power. It's about the people who benefit from some power. So you must learn to separate yourself from power. Riches is well separated from this governorship. A governor is just like a hat I wear, which can be dropped anytime. And it's for purpose of service. 
Something after that is, has nothing to do with my personal person and my personal life. But when you mix up power with your person, then abuse is inevitable. And so for me, uh, power is something that comes from God, and which can only be justified if it is used for the benefit of the common man. And if you look at it from that perspective, you see that it's about service. So it's, it's no longer about you, it's not about your comfort. And I've always said to people, anyone that comes into power and gets richer than he is, uh, is highly questionable, really, quite frankly. Power ought to bring everything out of you is a sacrifice, which either makes you go lower than who you are, or make you a little poorer than who you are, uh, and not becoming, becoming richer than the society that you govern. So most people become richer than the entire state. So for, for me, that is not governance. That's not governance. Well, one of the things you have been known for has been uh, your philanthropic uh, activities. But as uh, the incoming governor of uh, Imo State, what are your immediate plans for the near future? Well, the, uh, at this time now, people will notice in my government a, a bit of mixture of uh, my philanthropic life and governance. Because for me, it's about compassion. If you do have a compassionate heart, uh, the tendency that you, you take towards the ordinary people will be there. So uh, that's why in my program, the, 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 the educational program, which I intend to make free, and you must, uh, many people wonder, and they will say, listen, this is one of those political promises. But I assure people that if all I achieve is to make education free, so that the poorest or the poor child in the street can go to school, then I will have considered myself having achieved. But so my educational policy of free education still stands, and that's part of the philanthropic thing that you, you see in my life. And why do I say that? If, if everyone is educated, then people can afford to feed themselves. So I'm not going to be in, uh, giving fish, but I'll be teaching people uh, how to fish. So that, that's about the, my philanthropy and everything. I would also intend to, uh, there, are, there are stronger members of citizens of, of, of the society and weaker people. The essence of governance is able to bring those who are down a little up. And that's the beginning of the creation of the middle class. So my government will be middle class oriented. As much as possible, how can we create a middle class in this state where you have the, the factor of production or the sector of productive sector of the economy will be more injected because there are many hands contributing to that economy. But what will be, what, civil servants. Yes, civil servants. What we have now is a situation where there are only few people at the top and every other person is down and the few people keep dropping the drifts down and the people down are too many that the drift that come from is cannot even go around. That's why it's called poverty. So we try to bridge that and see whether we can have a reverse story of power. Where now the people would rather give to the top than the top giving to the down. I want to experiment that. As a governor, you are limited by some factors. You can do that better as a president, but as a governor, you are limited. But I will see how we can put that in place in uh, Imo State to allow the people now give us rather than us giving the people. And, and in that case, you have the bottom-top approach of government, which is excellent for a society like Africa, in certain Africa, where poverty is still very high. Well, I'd like to ask you a double-barreled question. Uh, would we be expecting you to reach out to your opponents, you know, the people who contested against you in this uh, election? Would we expect you to reach out to them in reconciliation and involve them in, uh, in governance? Hey, it, let me say something. I'm, I'm a governor, elect. I'm the grace of God, I'm a governor. And my governor means I'm the governor of the good, the bad, the ugly. In every society of man, you must have the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you, if you think I'm coming to say I'm a governor for only the uh, priests, then I'm wrong. This is, so my governance is going to cut across all the strata, helping the bad to get good and getting the ugly to look a little bad before getting back to good. What am I saying here is that really, I don't have any enemy, no political enemy. Uh, governor Hakim uh, is, is in history as a former governor. So he, he, will, he will have my respect and my, I will accord him all that is due him. But what, what this government will resist is any, any act of um, uh, 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 imposition of oneself, saying if, if it's not me, it can be right. And you see, that will again will touch the life of the ordinary people whom I have come to represent. That I will say no. But other than that, uh, the, the city and the state is big enough for everybody. So I'm not a little-minded person. I have a very large heart, as far as I know myself. And I'm going to reach out to everybody. Everybody's a friend. 
And sometimes in life, you see that the people who tend to be your enemies become the source of your, your progress in life. So you must be careful when you nail the coffins of your enemies because you might be nailing the coffin of your progress. So, uh, <laughs> so for me, it's all, uh, uh, let's do it together. Let's go to work. Let's have all, everybody be all hands on deck to change Imo State for better. Once again, congratulations on your electoral victory, Chief Rogers Okorocha. It's you. been a wonderful pleasure having this privilege to speak with you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, my friend.